a couple of months ago, Eric Smith, former CEO of Google, was talking to the U.S. Congress. He was indicating that in terms of AI, China may be only one year behind the United States. Smith is worried that the United States may lose in the next year to China the leading position that the United States are having at present in the AI world. In this video, we are going to review how the world has reached this situation. We are going to explore the plan of China on AI for the next years. What are the reasons behind it? What does it imply? And what is its current situation? Let's start. According to Kai Fu Li, ex-director of Google China, it all started in 2016 when a reinforcement learning program created by DeepMind won the game of Go to the world human champion Li Sedo. For Chinese people, a computer winning a person at this ancient game was shocking. It was at this moment when China realized the importance of AI and how the future as a country depended on leading it. Moved by that realization, in 2017, China's government released their strategic plan to lead the world of AI by 2030. They call it the New Generation AI Development Plan for 2030. In this strategic document, China's government indicates that being a leader in AI technology is critical for their military and economic position. Their goal, states the document, is to become an AI power by embedding AI in all aspects of life, industry, and commerce. They plan to leverage their advantage to other countries on four aspects. First, a large amount of data that they are generating both online and offline. As you probably know, China has already a society that functions based on the mobile internet. Chinese people can pay for anything and everything with their phone. This feature generates a lot of data from each transaction that Chinese people do on it. And this data is not only related to online purchases and actions, but also offline payments made at the supermarket, the barber, or the cinema. Second, a race of startup gladiators. As Skyfu Lee calls them in his book, AI Superpowers. Those, the startup gladiators, are all the startup leaders that are used to compete against each other in the most difficult conditions, trained in an environment where copying others is seen as the normal thing to do. This implies that for a Chinese startup to survive, they have to thrive even more, move faster, innovate faster, and take possession of the market faster. Otherwise, another startup will copy them and take them out of the game. Third, a committed government, which is willing to put the resources to achieve the success of the plan by providing the infrastructures and the supporting conditions for companies to flourish. In order to better understand this point, let me clarify that the government AI plan acts more like a wish list rather than an actual list of commands. The government indicates a list of technologies they would like to see built and then incentivizes local officials to promote in their private sector the development of those technologies by using subsidized public contracts and AI-friendly policies. And fourth, a society hungry for success. People in China want to be rich and want to matter in the world. And they will go wherever there is a chance to become one. 
and they will put all their effort into it. Having indicated the advantages that China has in order to lead the AI world, the document also describes the drawbacks that they must face. First, a lack of cutting-edge AI talent. The government of China identifies that they lack people training AI and related fields. So, in order to solve this problem, they launched in 2018 the AI Innovation Action Plan for colleges and universities, with which they plan to train 500 teachers and 5,000 students in five years. Uh, if we have to evaluate as for their 2020 report, they have achieved 103 non-university scientific research institutions in the field of AI. And in that same report, they indicate that they have 215 colleges and universities with undergraduate majors on AI. However, there is still a lack of AI talent. Actually, at present, there is a war for talent in China where the most important companies, they are fighting for the best AI talent in order to get them to work for them at their companies by paying them amazing salaries. The second drawback is a lack of major original results and knowledge in relevant sectors required for the success of the plan. And that includes uh, high-end semiconductors because AI runs on top of them. So if you want to be the leader on AI, you must master the making of semiconductors then a lack of AI technical standards. Um, they are working on this also, and they have launched in 2018 a white paper about AI standards. And then also a lack of software frameworks and platforms for AI. None of the popular ones used by the AI community like uh, TensorFlow, Spark, PyTorch, CAFE, have been developed in China. Then, the third drawback is a lack of an ecological niche that allows fruitful interactions between research institutions and enterprises, allowing the application of latest results into products. China has some big companies working on AI like Tencent, Baidu, Alibaba, but their AI level is still behind the level of the big ones from the United States. China also has at least 10 privately owned AI startups valued at more than $1 billion, including, for example, the fa facial recognition firm SenseTai. But again, that doesn't make a rich ecosystem for the transfer of good AI research ideas into products. For that, a bigger ecosystem for startups is required. In their 2021 report, they indicated that they have so far 2,205 artificial intelligence enterprises distributed in 20 application fields, with an 8.39% of them applied to intelligent robots. The AI plan of China identifies seven key AI areas that they must master and provide a specific expected results. The first one is the medical imaging systems. That is the commercialization of medical imaging diagnosis support systems for the early detection of diseases lead by a machine. And the goals are to keep a false negatives below 100% and to detect common diseases with 90% of accuracy. The second area is audio intelligence, that is, smart devices with speech recognition abilities. And their goal, they have a static state, is a 96% accuracy in a speech recognition. Third, area is the connected vehicles, that is to create uh, smart vehicles that are able to autonomously navigate in complex scenarios. 
their goals divided into two parts. The first one is to cover low level automated driving by 2020. And second one is to cover high level automatic driving. Fourth area is uh, language translation. That is to produce the translation solutions that are extremely reliable and accurate in multi-language scenarios. The goal in this area is to achieve an 85% of translation accuracy. Then it comes the area of service robots. And that is deployed robots that are able to replace humans in sectors like education, caregiving, and cleaning. Being the goal to overcome challenges of novel scenarios. Then the sixth area is that of a manned aerial vehicles. Vehicles with completely automatic cruise control capable of operating in highly complex environments. And their goal is to get a 360 degree omnidirectional sensitivity and an accuracy margin of 0.005 degrees. Then the final area is image recognition. And this is one of the most ambitious goals. Starting from improving image recognition, they also are pushing into video understanding and summarization, search for specific images inside a video, and human video integration. The goal is to help build China's social credit system. I haven't found any document that indicates the progress made on any of those areas, even if some of the results were expected to be done by the 2020. So what I suspect is that it's not that easy to get research results for one specific date. So one thing is to build research centers and to train people, but another different is to have a very specific research result for a given date. So research doesn't work this way. It has its own times. And then maybe here there is a point of difficulty into bringing this plan into a success. We'll see. In any case, China has committed hundreds of billions of dollars to the project. And in order to achieve success, the full plan has been divided into three time frames. First one, be finished by 2020, to put China into the wall in each one of those subjects. That means put China up to date in all those fields. Well, we are already in 2021, so can we consider that they have achieved this goal, this first phase? Well, if we analyze the reports that have been released in 2018, 2020, and 2021, in those reports, China reported the following achievements. China is now number one in both total AI research papers and highly cited AI papers worldwide. China has number one in AI patents. China has number one in AI venture capital investment. They also have number two in the number of AI companies and number two in the largest AI talent pool. In 2021, a Stanford report indicates that Chinese AI researchers are being more cited than any others. So I think that we can say yes, we can consider achieve this first phase. Then the second phase is to be finished by 2025. And the goal is to achieve major breakthroughs in AI in all the previously indicated subjects. Finally, the third phase to be finished by 2030. The goal is to dominate each one of those sectors and become the world AI leaders in each one of them. While China is moving forward with their plan, some voices inside the country have started to point about the dangers of working towards achieving it. 
Some officials state that there is a chance that global competition over AI could start an AI arms race among countries which could lead to a war. The officials are also concerned that states may be more prone to attack other countries with AI military systems due to the lack of casualties. On top of that, the automation of decision systems lead by AIs can cause many misperceptions and quick conflict escalation, leading again to a war. In order to prevent those situations, in 2018, China's Academy of Information and Communications Technology published the AI Security White Paper, where they advocate for an international cooperation to create norms that govern the application of those systems at the level of the planet. Then a dialogue between the countries has already started to try to prevent this kind of catastrophe. Actually, I consider this point like the real danger of artificial intelligence, not the creation of very smart robots that will enslave us, neither the creation of small machines that become wild and then convert the whole world into paper clips, but instead, smart enough machines that can take decisions by themselves and escalate conflicts between humans due to misunderstandings. That is for me the real danger in artificial As a final comment, I would like to stress how China's AI plan puts a lot of emphasis on using the rules of the market to get the results in terms of commercialized products. This means the results of the AI research must be closely tied to AI products that the market wants. That is why they stress the interconnection between education, research, investment, and building enterprises. As a conclusion, I would like to state that we are only nine years before the 2030. Then we have to judge by the other plans that China has achieved, like for example, removing poverty from the country, or the first phase of this same plan that they all of them have been achieved. This indicates that chances are that they are going to achieve also this AI plan for 2030. Additionally, there are other Chinese government plans in the middle that are also pushing this AI plan, like, for example, the Made in China 2025 plan, which I will talk about this in another video. What I'm pretty sure is that China's AI plan has revolutionized the AI world and is speeding it up, which is good for all of us. So, given the speed that artificial intelligence is getting, the whole field is going to need a lot of experts in AI and robotics. The future of AI is going to be a battle for data and for talent, said David Wyeth, lead researcher at Microsoft Research in Beijing. So, this is clear. There is a lack of AI and robotics talent. Then, if you want to become part of this revolution, you need to start now and get up to speed about artificial intelligence and how to apply it to robotics. For that, go into the construct and become one of the pioneers of artificial intelligence applied to robotics. The opportunity is now because there are not many people doing that right now. So start now learning about deep learning, reinforcement learning, machine learning for robotics, all this at the construct. Take our step-by-step -step learning path on AI for robotics, practice with the simulated robots, and then connect to our remote real robots located in Barcelona, Spain, and practice with them from your location. Everything is practice-based, including theory learning, 
so you will understand why you are learning a certain AI algorithm or subject. If you liked this video and would like to know more, check the video description below, which contains the links to all the documents that I have examined in order to create this video. Also, in future videos, I will be analyzing the plan of the United States as a response to China's AI plan, and as well the Europe AI plan, if any. Well, let me know what you think about this video on the comments below, and remember to keep pushing your Roth learning.